Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings upon us are immense. In the short time that we have together here today, that we hope that Allah Ta'ala will put us in a state of teleko, because this is the way of the believers to constantly be in a state where we are reminded and we take reminders and we learn lessons from everyone and everything that is happening around us. And because this is such a dear community to my heart, I wanted to share something to you that, with you, that impacted me greatly. And I don't normally read in this way from something that is written, but because it affected me, and there's so many beloved people to me in this community, that I hope it also has the same impact upon you. And the backdrop to this email interaction was with someone that we wanted to invite for a program, and this was her response in her way of saying that she was unable to be there. And we want to use this as a gateway to the brief comments that we want to make about prophetic optimism and how our Prophet was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in relation to maintaining hope, in relation to that taking good omens, in relation to being positive, in relation in having that true optimism, prophetic optimism about the future. So in this email, this was her response, and I will just read. I am actually drowning here. Your du'as are requested. We have started up many projects, and yet there are so few people that can truly carry them. We find ourselves having to multitask and teach at weekend programs that in the Muslim class at the home co-ed operative my daughter attends, at a weekly class for general Muslims, take care of children on a daily basis at the kindergarten we have opened, help with the children during the events we run, lecture events, support and give counsel to sisters going through divorce, marriage, or breakdown, health problems, dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> Each time I prepare someone to take over a role in the work we are doing here, they either get married and leave the city, or are expecting children and so they have to stay at home, or simply grow tired and weary with the project they have been given. We ask Allah for lutf, ameen. We live in a time where very few will sacrifice. The teachings that change the course of our lives seem to only inspire people in the moment. They love the idea of being from those that serve Allah, yet lack the strength and courage to divorce the world. Their mortgages, careers, cars, homes, children are dear to them. They simply cannot live as this work requires them to live. They justify their way of life through giving in charity when they can, attending courses and lectures from time to time, and giving doubt to their colleagues at work, their hidden lives in following their interests, whether it be the study of Islamic medicine, designing modest clothing, cooking prophetic foods, calligraphy, the list goes on. These are blessed Muslims, for they are aware that life must be lived upon the halal unless they live upon this, but they live upon it on their own terms. They have no inclination to do what really needs to be done. We are in a time in which our sons and daughters are being lost to drugs, alcohol, fornication, and even worse, the actual loss of faith. We ask a lot of protection for us and our offspring. Despite this, no one is interested in saving humanity. They're only interested in saving themselves. We find ourselves in the midst of madness. Through this work, this fakira, this poor and poor soul, has, been, has began to understand the way of my teachers. To give love and not to give orders. For the people of this age cannot do what is asked of them. They desire only to be loved by their teachers and not to be asked to serve the da'wah their teachers serve. SubhanAllah, one of my teachers told me, give love more than you give the sacred law because no one wants to hear, for the most part, about God's commands. They only want to hear about love. The hearts of the people of our time are weak. It has taken me 10 years to understand these words. The people of God that uphold the truth in the spirit of the Sahaba, who sacrificed their homes, their wealth, their children, and their very selves as they stood on the battlefields of Badr and Uhud, as they made the migration from Al-Qaeda, taking nothing but the love of Allah and His Messenger and provisions, 
as they built the Masjid of Medina with their bare hands, those whom the spirit of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah caused them to declare, may my very being be sacrificed for you, O Messenger of Allah. This is a spirit that is rare amongst people. The majority are, as Imam al-Zadi says, like donkeys in a manger, pleased only when his master brings him more hay to eat. The increase of their wage and promotion, the security of their jobs, this is what fills the majority with joy. They earnestly work to seek stability in this world and turn their entire being towards this lovely goal. The world is their kibla. And so their lives are directed towards it, and they are in complete circumambulation. Their lives revolve around their economic stability. Blessed be Imam Ajmin, who said the Muslims are in their graves. 313 men of Allah stood with the Messenger وسلم, on the field of Badr with four horses between them, a few stores and sticks and stones. But they had a faith that was so formidable that they fought like supermen with a strength that did not come from their bodies, but with a strength that came from their souls, souls illuminated with the light of truth. And Habib Omar and our teachers, this spirit is alive and we tasted it and fell in love with it. We were sincere and wanted only Allah as messenger to be in the presence of the righteous. We pledged allegiance to this path that laid our hearts bare in front of Allah as purely poor, impoverished people that would be in the service of this truth. And be as our teachers are, those that give their flesh, their blood, their lives in raising the banner of this great truth. We were ordered to these lands to plant seeds. And we're so naive to think that he who plants seeds is easy. To think that the job of he who plants seeds is easy. On my last night before going home, one of my teachers told me, if you can't plant seeds, then plow. So that the land is fertile enough for the next generation to plant seeds. If you can't plant seeds, then plow. Plow the land so it is fertile enough for the next generation to plant seeds. And so we plow, and we plow, and we plow. But my goodness, the weight of this task is so extreme. For folk are not like ourselves. We find that our feet and our hands are bleeding. And until we have alongside as people that bear the spirit of sacrifice, we will have to carry this work alone. By Allah, we've been in company of great people, and it is because of them that we do not pray under this weight. By Allah, this fear feels their support. We are scattered around the earth, and we know we need to help each other and bear the weight of this work. We are brethren bonded by a secret that we are given in sacred lands. And then she goes on to say, is that this is why that she wasn't able to attend. Allah, this is someone who's understand the purpose of life. This is someone who understands the essential message that our Prophet وسلم, is that he not only inspired but instilled into the companions of our Prophet وسلم, by Allah, these are the meanings that is going to determine our quality as a believer. This is what's going to determine that who we are, is that the way that we stand in relation to these meanings. But one of the ways of our Prophet وسلم, is to teach us is that we have to be people of work. We have to be people that are ready to roll up our sleeves and to be in it until we take our very last breath. And one of the things that our Prophet taught us is to have unfeathered optimism in light of the worst situations possible. And if we look at the life of our Prophet وسلم, is that we find that these meanings are all interconnected. <coughs> optimism, hope, positivity, taking good omens, and then accompanying that with hard work. And our Prophet وسلم, is that his optimism was different than other people's optimism because it was revealed, it was rooted in revelation. It was rooted in relation to what his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him about the future. And that we know that he was given knowledge about what was going to happen in the future. But it is by virtue of our connection to him and our belief in him is that we believe in the promise of Allah. And that we believe that in a very different way that people have hope in the dunya, people that don't share belief, is that their hope is restricted to this world, while our hope is rooted in our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and belief in Him, and related to our ultimate return unto Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, this world will never be a utopia. 
If anyone thinks that it is, is that they are deceived, is that it will always be in the state that it's in. And yes, just as we are required to do the work that we have to do while we are here in this world, is that we simultaneously have to be detached from that. And to realize is that what really is going to remain is what we do for his sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kullu shayn halikun illa wajha. One of the meanings of that is, is that all of the deeds that we do are perishing except that which was done solely and sincerely for his sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you look at the life of our Prophet, is that you will find in the most compromising of times, is that our Prophet would give the Sahaba immense glad tidings. Think about as he would pass by Ammar ibn Yasir and his blessed mother Sumayya and their blessed family and he would see them being brutally persecuted and he knew that there was nothing that he could do except give them true hope in Allah. Sabran ya al-Yasir fina mu'idikum al-Jannah Have patience, O oh family of Yasir is that your tryst is paradise. This is when it's going to really all come to the surface and people will do anything, they would do anything were they to see the station of Yasser, Ahmad ibn Yasser, and his father and his blessed mother on Yom al Qiyamah. They would wish to come back and to go through everything that they went through here in this dunya. Likewise, our Prophet وسلم, in the Blessed Hijrah, we all know the story, but I'm connecting it to this prophetic optimism about which we are speaking. Is that as he does everything that he did during the Hijrah, taking all of the means, and it is here when the bounty was placed on his head and one of those that who was previously a criminal coming to chase him down because they wanted that bounty of a that meagerly hundred camels for the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that we know the story of Suraka. And after the miracle happened, he realized this was a prophet and believed in him. And what did our prophet tell him? That he says, is that how will it be when you are wearing the bracelets of the king of Persia? He's going on this route precisely because he's trying to avoid people from capturing him or taking his life, sallallahu alayhi wa But while he's in this state, he's giving someone glad tidings that he's going to wear the bracelets of the king of Persia. Think about what our Prophet was instilling in the companions. And one of the most salient examples of this is in the battle of Khandak, in the battle of the trench that we've all read about. And we've all heard about, but it's time for us to start living the lessons of these battles. We don't want this to be read in a historical fashion. Yes, there's an element of history to it, but the whole purpose of these stories is to inspire you and I. We want to be like them. It's like one of the great imams of our deen is that he used to work really hard to the extent that his mother was worried about him. He was doing so much spiritual struggle. He was studying so much that the mother and came to complain to his teacher. And he said to his teacher, came to him and said, take it easy. Do what it is that you can do. And to know, rely upon the bounty of Allah. Inshallah, you receive the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ. But what was his response to his teacher? He says that I know that many of the great people of this ummah is that some of them will be raised as an ummah. As Allah describes the Prophet Abraham, there will be those that have a banner in their hand, Yom al Qiyamah, that they are the means for people to enter into paradise because they interceded for them. He said, I don't want to enter under someone else's banner, although he, everyone wants to enter under the banner of Sayyidina Muhammad, but by extension, he says, I want to have my own banner. And he says, if that is your intention, then keep doing what it is that you are doing. Our Prophet in this battle of Khandaq as that the largest army in the Arabian Peninsula ever had been amassed against them. 10,000 people against the companions. And they built a trench to defend themselves. And they came to a rock that our Prophet ﷺ, after setting the line and drawing it with his own blessed hand and staff وسلم, is that when they were unable to dig those boulders out that they came back to the Prophet and told him about it. And he didn't tell them to dig around and he himself went to the place because he'd set the line on where to dig. And then is that he hit it three times with his staff. And there's different narrations. One of them says the first time that he struck that there was a flash of light like lightning. And he says, Allahu Akbar, Futihat Faris. Persia has been opened up for me. And then a second strike and the second third of that Boulder was pulverized, Allahu Akbar, Futihat Li, that room. 
room was open for me, and then, according to this narration, is that he struck it a third time when the entire rock became pulverized, and he says, Allahu Akbar, is that Allah Ta'ala has made Himyar one of the largest tribes of an Arab Atwalin wa Ansaban, the people that would help and give victory to this cause. These, and there are many, many, many other examples of our Prophet وسلم, is that he instilled these meanings in the companions. And one of the reasons that optimism is so important is because it relates very subtly to the choices that we make as an individual. In other words, is that if you look at the opposite, which is pessimism, if we are pessimistic, the worst thing that can happen and the worst thing that could arise from that pessimism is not doing the work that we're meant to do. Because the nature of the human being becomes, we become despondent. We become lazy, that when we are overwhelmed with pessimism. And so our Prophet ﷺ, that we have clear narrations that indicate this, is that he didn't like Tiyarah ﷺ, he didn't like taking bad omens. And by extension, is that he didn't like people that were in a pessimistic state. Is that he liked fa'al and tafa'al. That he liked optimism وسلم. He wanted us to take good omens. And extending and extrapolating means from that is that he was very well aware of the subtleties of the way that we work as human beings. And that is when we have hope, which is closely related to optimism, is that this is what allows us to be able to do what it is that we do. It is the fuel for that soul that will drive us to do whatever it is that we can do and look at the principle of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The hadith that we've all heard but narrated in the Muslim Imam Ahmad is that if the day of judgment comes upon one of you and he has in his hand a fasila, a seed, فَلْيَغْرِسْهَا Let him plant that seed, even if he's not going to be there to be able to reap its fruit. Our Prophet commanded us to do the work even if there was no hope for that to bear fruit in this world. What is he teaching us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? A lot. But one of the most subtle meanings is, is our mu'amala with Allah, with the heart is that the way that we interact with our Lord and what is the intention behind what we do. We as believers simultaneously have to have high hope that there be fruits for our work, but also we be completely detached from the fruit and result of our work. It very well might be is that no one responds to anything that we do. The sacrifices that we make is that we don't see it bringing about any benefit, at least apparently, that at the surface level. However, is that if you dig much deeper and to understand the meanings behind those who actually uphold this work, they are much deeper. They are of a cosmic nature. They relate to the very, they relate to the upholding of the world in and of itself. Just as Allah will remove this world when the last spirit of the believer is taken. Likewise, this is the case especially with the righteous, those who are the khulafa of Allah on this earth. But these are lofty meanings is that we have to aspire to. And that we have to understand that our Prophet وسلم, did not tell us about these meanings except is that he realized their importance. And he realized is that is that what it relates to in terms of what happens when they're lost in an individual. And from everything that has been said, I want to examine now the words of our Prophet that again that we've all heard. But look what he says, and this is the narration of Sahih Muslim, the hadith about his ajaban min amr al mu'min, that it's amazing the affair of the believer. In the amr kulluhu khair, his affair is all good. But in this narration, what is said? Wa ma daka illa lil mu'min, but that is only for the mu'min. He didn't say you're Muslim, and you study in theology the interrelationship between Islam and Iman and someone who's a Muslim and a Muslim and at one level they're synonyms and they're interchangeable but at another level depending upon how it's used here this is related to a higher degree this is someone who truly believes in other words what our Prophet is teaching us is that we have to be a believer and not only have general faith but have that move into experiential faith where it's translated into a world view and we interpret in every single moment the situation at hand in a way that is pleasing to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we're going to talk about a cure for pessimism 
or any of those other things that were mentioned, negativity and taking by the omens and so forth and so on, is that it starts with faith. And it starts with taking our deen seriously and learning how we can strengthen our faith because the stronger our faith is, the more that we will believe in the promise of Allah. And the more that we have that otherworldly impulse, impulse within ourselves, flourishing and driving us towards work for the afterlife is that the more that we will move away from the meanings of despair and pessimism. And then there's other things that we could do as well. Is that we can make sure is that when we talk about things is that we need to mitigate our discussions of evil and wrong with dua. If you're watching a new segment and that you feel bad after which you should if you see that much of what is shown to us in the news is that we should, in a very serious way, and I'm not joking, take a minute after to make dua. Take time after of ever that concern that you have is good, but if it's not accompanied by action, what is the real benefit of it? And if you don't do it right after, at least at tahajjud time or in the morning when you wake up or some other time, to the extent that we're exposed to these types of things, you have to also follow up with du'a and doing something about it, at least du'a. And actually, du'a is also the heart of the affair. But also, is that we have to be very careful to get ourselves in prolonged conversations, even with our friends, about subjects that are subjects of darkness. Because that if you focus too much on evil and darkness, it brings darkness to your heart. And this is something that I think about all of my teachers. From beginning to end, one of the things, the take-homes, is that every time you are with them, you leave with a renewed spiritual aspiration. You renew, you leave uplifted, and you relieve their presence that with a spiritual battery that has been charged, and you're ready to go. And you're ready to put your roll your sleeves up and get to work. Across the board, is that this is one of the things that I've noticed consistently with the people of Allah is that they don't like to dwell on evil. Is that, yes, we need to assess the situation, and optimism does not mean that we are naive. Nor does it mean that we look at things uncritically. Nor does it mean is that we're unsophisticated. Nor does it mean that we're debilitated. On the contrary, is that what we have to understand is while we also see things as they are, we understand the situation and the affairs, most importantly of all is that we do the work. And this is what our Prophet is teaching us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in all of these lesson narrations that teach us about the importance of optimism. May Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq. <laughs>
As our Prophet informed us وسلم, when you think about the reward that Allah Taala has in store for the believer, when Allah Ta'ala that gives the believers their gifts on Yom Qiyamah, and then we enter into paradise, and we experience the bliss of every moment of paradise, which increases exponentially. The summation of the, the next moment is better than a summation of all of the other previous moments. And this goes on until eternity. It just keeps getting better and better and better and better. And we know that Allah has in paradise that which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor that which has even come to the heart of a human being. How could we be anything other than inspired? And in closing, when in relation to, we all know what today is. You can see what I'm saying in light of today, as well as in light of anything else that happens in your life. We're talking religious principles at this point. Is that when I explain this to my teachers, that about some of the concerns of the Muslim community, he said, لا تخافوا الخير بقبل عليكم do not have any fear, good is coming to you. It doesn't mean that there's going to be hardship. But the believer is enlightened, and part of his enlightenment is understanding is that precisely in challenges are the greatest of opportunities. And when you understand that, how could you be anything other than optimistic? And how could you be anything other than also amazed like our prophet was? And think about it, why was our prophet amazed? Why was he amazed of the affair of the believer? Is because he realized, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is important for us to tap into the way he had his tawheed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that everything was from Allah. Everything ultimately is from Allah. And this is why that this very issue ties to these issues that relate to the very essence of our iman. And it's only when our iman becomes strong and we can overcome many of these shackles that are literally preventing other people from reaching higher degrees of practice of this deen is that we will then move into that these levels of closest to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq in this. In Allah wa malaikatahu wa sallam ala al nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima Allahumma salli wa sallam ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi sayyidina Muhammad Kama salli ta ala sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala alihi sayyidina Ibrahim Wa baraka ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi sayyidina Muhammad كما بارك على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حبيب مجيد ورضي الله تعالى عن سادتنا خلفاء الرشيدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعلى جميع سادتنا الصحابة الكرام أحد بيت رسول الله المطهرين من الأرجاس وعلينا معهم فيهم رحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين الله يوفق المؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ويأسر الله سبحانه وتعالى to give us all optimism and Allah تبارك وتعالى give us true hope and bless us to have a positive outlook Ya Rabbi Alameen and bless us to be able to follow the sunnah of our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in all of our different affairs may Allah inspire every single one of us to be able to be in the service of not only our community but all of humanity and make the life of our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم be that is which that we that judge everything and the lens through which we see everything and the inspiration for which is that it is the inspiration for everything that we do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to be all of different affairs. Bless our family and our children and our communities and bless us with the very best of results and the end of results and may our endings all be good. May we all say when we exit this dunya, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad wa Rasulullah completely actualize its meanings in the day na'udhi, awakum Allah, nasalakum Allah. إن الله يقول بالعدل والإحسان وإيكار ذي القربى من هاء الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله لي من الفرهم واشكروا عن يمين زدكم ورذكروا الله أكبر